Grace, peace, and love, family, and welcome on back in to the Bread, Wine, and Soul Food channel, where we deal with nothing but what thus saith the Lord, the Holy Scriptures from Genesis to Revelation, the King James Version of the Bible, and everything that the Father and Jesus Christ has made known and revealed unto us through his Spirit of Truth, also known as the Comforter and the Holy Ghost. So with that being said, all praise, honor, and glory be unto the Almighty God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, in Jesus name because truly without him like Jesus said over here in John 15 and at the end of verse 5 for without me ye can do nothing we always open up the Bible study with this scripture because we want to make it clear as day we can't do nothing without God and anything you try to do without God it will be unsuccessful so it's best for us human beings to submit to this glorious wisdom that God has given us out of his holy word and live by it. so let's open up this bible study on this sabbath eve with psalm 67 in this entirety it says god be merciful unto us and bless us and cause his face to shine upon us selah that thy way may be known upon earth thy saving health among all nations let the people praise thee O god let all the people praise thee Oh, let the nations be glad and sing for joy, for thou shalt judge the people righteously and govern the nations upon earth. Selah. Let the people praise thee, O God. Let all the people praise thee. Then shall the earth yield her increase, and God, even our own God, shall bless us. God shall bless us, and all the ends of the earth shall fear him. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading, hearing, and application of his holy word to our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. So once again, family, welcome on in. Peace to everybody that's tuning in now and later. And since today is Friday, it is Sabbath Eve, so I pray that everybody enjoy this day. We made it. The Lord allowed us to see another day. So thank God for that in the almighty name of Jesus. So once again... We're going to deal with this topic that the Lord Jesus Christ sent his Holy Spirit and inspired us to do, or me to do. Uh, and that is God's word encourages us to draw closer to him, not away from him. So what we're going to take a look at throughout the course of this Bible study is how all throughout the scriptures, you never see God telling nobody to draw close to him. It's always about drawing closer to the Lord. Even when trials and tribulations is happening, we got to draw closer to the Lord. The Lord ain't turning nobody away that's coming to him. He said, if you come to him and you belong to him, he ain't going to cast you out. So God is encouraging us to draw closer to him through his word. This is why we read it every day. This is why we do our best to actually apply what we read to our everyday lives. All right. So let's take a look at this. Let's go over here. to Let's open it up with James. James 4. James 4. And let's take a look at verses 7 through 8. Because we're supposed to be drawing closer to the Lord. Even, like I said, when trials and tribulations happening. We got to draw closer to the Lord. We got to stay tucked off in that safe place. Under God's protection. Under his word. So let's take a look at this. Let's see what James, the brother of Jesus, had to say. James 4. Verses 7 through 8, it says, Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Submit means to yield. Don't rebel against him. Submit to him. And let's see what else he said. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. So when you resist the devil in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, he going to flee. He don't want to hang around. When he see that he can't tempt you or get you, he'll, he'll, he'll leave, but he'll come back for a season. But anyway... The scripture said, resist the devil and he will flee from you. And what else? Draw nigh to God and he will draw nigh to you. How do we draw close to God? Through obeying his word, through prayer and meditation of his word. This is how we draw closer to God. He says, cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and purify your hearts, ye double minded. So, we can't serve God and mammon or fleshly things or worldly things. We got to be single heartedly serving the Lord thy God with all our heart, mind, body and soul without no distractions. God want our undivided attention because 
you know, it's easy for us as human beings to get distracted with things. We don't want to study as much, but that can't be the case when you're calling yourself a disciple of Christ. We got to really be studying this word and finding out what God is requiring of us. So we read it and then we apply it. All right. So we draw closer to God through being obedient, through prayer, meditation of his word and actually living out what thus said the Lord, according to the way that he told us to. Let's see what else he said over here. Let's go over to Revelation. Let's see what else the word telling us. Revelations three. Revelations 3 and verse 20. And we see in here, we can have God himself dwelling with us if we just submit to him and draw closer to him. Because it's good for us to draw close to him, especially in this evil world that we live in. Here. We need God for everything. We're not self-sufficient. We are sufficient or dependent upon God totally. So let's continue. Revelations 3. In verse 20, we can't do nothing without him, family. We are not independent from God. We need him. We are dependent upon him. Revelations 3, verse 20. It says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come in to him and will sup with him and he with me. So you can be sitting down, eating at the table with the Lord. If you just obey him, let him in. How you let him in? Through obeying his word, through acceptance of his word. This is how we accept the word of God. Well, this is how we draw closer to him, accepting the things that he told us. So let's continue. He says, to him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I also overcame and am set down with my father in his throne. So the benefits of being obedient to God's word and drawing closer to him. Gives you a spot in the kingdom ruling with him. Come on now. That's a that's a very high honor for somebody that's made out of dirt. But he going to change our vile body that it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body one day. Now, this is what we're looking for. This is why we serve him and drawing closer to the Lord, because the Lord is letting us know that there's another kingdom or another government. From out of heaven, that's going to be set up here on this wicked earth. He says, he that hath an ear, let him hear what the spirit saith unto the churches. So if you got an ear to hear what thus saith the Lord, the same thing that he told to the churches is the same thing that he telling us to listen to. The word don't change, family. And, the, and God's word is enduring throughout all generations for us. It's for us as well. So let's continue with this. Let's go over here to John. John 14, and we're going to match that precept up about how God said he'll come to you. So let's take a look at this. John 14, let's read verses 23 through 24. It says, Jesus answered and said unto him, if a man love me, he will keep my words. So if we truly love God, we're going to do what he say. We will be obedient unto him. All right. He says, and my father will love him. Oh, my goodness. You see why we keep God's commandments? Because we're trying to be loved of God and the Father. Or of Jesus and the Father, which they both God. It says, and my Father will love him, and we will come unto him and make our abode with him. So you got the Lord coming and making his abode with us, dwelling with us. How is he dwelling with us? Through the word that he spoke unto us. This is how, this is how we draw closer to him. He says, he that loveth me not keepeth not my sins. And the word which ye hear is not mine, but the father's which sent me. So this is the father's word that we read in right here, family. So once again, if you don't love God, you ain't going to be obedient to him. But if you love him, you're going to do exactly what he say, because he made it plain as day right here in verse 15. If you love me, keep my commandments. If you love God, you're going to be obedient to him. So I can't read nowhere in the scriptures where God did away with his commandments or his law. I can't read nowhere where he did this. This is how we have fellowship with God through obedience. All right. So let's continue with this precept. Let's go on and take a look at something else. Deuteronomy 5. Deuteronomy 5. And let's take a look at this over here. 
Let's see what God said. Deuteronomy 5 and verse 29. Deuteronomy 5 and verse 29. It says, Oh, that there was such an heart in them that they would fear me and keep all my commandments always that it might be well with them and with their children forever. Because God chose the children of Israel to be his priests and his ministers, a peculiar people to take care of God's business, to share his word. Everything concerning God, God gave that to us. <clears throat> All of the oracles and things of that nature. So once again, God wants us to have a heart to serve him and to obey him all of the time, family. So we should start incorporating this into our prayers, asking for spiritual things. Because remember, if you seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, all these things will be added unto you. You ain't going to be lacking nothing. The scriptures even said, no good thing will the Lord withhold from them that seek him or the ones that love him god ain't gonna withhold no good thing from us this is how we have fellowship with god through obedience let's go and see what king david had to say let's go over to first chronicles 28 so it's good for us to draw near to god because in god we got protection we secure we safe even our eternal life is safe first chronicles 28 verse 9 Look at what King David told his son, Solomon. He says, and thou, Solomon, my son, know thou the God of thy father and serve him with a perfect heart and with a willing mind. So we got to serve God, not out of routine, but because we truly love him, because we have a testimony about the true and living God, because we can read about him. So we got to have a perfect heart and a willing mind. We got to be ready to do what thus said the Lord, family. We have to be ready to deny ourselves, even sometimes facing humiliation. That comes with the territory. But at the end of the day, you know what you got coming. You got a spot in the kingdom coming. So, yeah, this world is trash. Let's get this world up so that we can get something better. It's called sacrifice. And for those of us who play chess or have played chess and even going beyond chess, having children or family. Taking care of responsibility. You know that being an adult requires great sacrifice. Giving up something of value to gain something of greater value. So once again, it says, for the Lord searcheth all hearts. Wait a minute. God searching our heart? Yeah. The scriptures even tell you over there in Proverbs 20 and 27. The candle of the Lord or the spirit of man is the candle of the Lord. Searching all the inward parts of the belly. So, God, he can see exactly what we're doing. All he got to do is just tap into us. Proverbs 20 and 27. I'm just showing you all this to, you know, so you can go and take a look at it on your own. All right. So once again, going back to First Chronicles 28 and verse, middle of verse 9, it says, And understandeth all the imaginations of the thoughts. If thou seek him, he will be found of thee. But if thou forsake him, he will cast thee off forever. Ooh, you don't want to walk away from God. The scriptures are encouraging us to draw closer to him, not away from him. Even when trouble come, things happen that's out of your control. Look, Lord, I need your help. Can you show me what to do? Can you open up this, that for me? Can you do this X, Y, and Z? Can you show me how to adjust to what's happening right now? Because I don't understand, Lord, I need you. Can you help me? And watch how God be showing up. He's just so perfect. Let me let you all know something, family. I wouldn't be sitting up here reading what thus saith the Lord, telling you all about what thus saith the Lord, if I haven't seen this for myself. And obviously, you all are witnesses to this. The scriptures is witness to this. We need God. That's all it is to it. As a matter of fact, Let's go and take a look at King David's great grandson, great, great grandson, King Asa. Let's see what he had to say. So let's go and take a look. Let's go and see this over here in Second Chronicles 15. Let's see what his great, great grandson had to say. Wouldn't that be amazing? You get to the kingdom of God, you'd be like, man, I didn't even know you, but I was saying the same thing as you. 
And the scriptures even say, man, they, they, Jacob going to be asking, where are all of these kids? Where, they, where did all of these people come from? Oh, those was the ones that was keeping God's commandments. We was all following the same testimony. Man, how great that's going to be in the kingdom. We was all saying the same thing. We ain't even know each other. But the father connected us all through his word, through his son. That's going to be amazing. But anyway, 2 Chronicles 15, let's read verses 1 through 4. Let's read this. So it says, And the Spirit of God came upon Azariah, the son of Oded. And he went out to meet Asa and said unto him, Hear ye me, Asa, and all Judah and Benjamin. The Lord is with you while you be with him. And if ye seek him, he will be found of you. But if ye forsake him, he will forsake you. So wait a minute. Azariah said the same thing that King David said. So he said, if you seek him, he'll be found of you so we can find God. Even Paul was saying the same thing. To the uh, Greeks, he ain't far from every one of us. If you just feel around for him, you'll find him. He there. It says now what for a long season, Israel have been without the true God. And without a teaching priest and without law. But when they in their trouble did turn unto the Lord God of Israel and saw them, he was found of them. So once again, when some calamity rose, God in his merciful and compassionate state, he always compassionate and merciful. He want all of us to turn back to him, no matter who you are. That's the message. That's the good news that you can be saved from wrath. Even I love how the Lord was talking about in uh, Hosea 13 and 9 and Hosea 14 and 1. Oh, Israel, thou hast destroyed thyself, but in me is thine help. Just turn back to God. He can help you. We just got to submit to him, family. So once again, we see what Azariah said. So now let's go and take a look at something else now. Because Israel got a problem with God. And they've been taught bad doctrine and when you try to show the correct thing they don't want to hear it you know why because they close in their eyes and their ears the fear of god is taught by the precepts of men and this is why people ain't really getting no understanding because a man is teaching you out of his own heart he ain't teaching you what thus saith the lord we got to stick to the bible we can't take god's word and try to flip it and put our own twist and spin to it if the word say exactly what it say then that's what it say if the words say Jesus was born of a virgin, then he was born of a virgin. We can't question that. That's what the word said. Let's take a look at this. Let's look at this one verse. Because uh, uh, these people, they were closing their eyes. They didn't want to hear what thus said the Lord. So God just poured upon them the spirit of deep sleep. You want to believe a lie? God will give you over to a strong delusion that you could believe a lie. That's dangerous. Isaiah 29 and verse 13, it says, Wherefore, the Lord said, For as much as this people draw near me with their mouth, and with their lip, lips do honor me. So that's why Jesus was saying in Luke 6 and 46, Why call ye me Lord, Lord, and do not the things which I say? Why are you calling me your Lord and you ain't obeying me? How is that? How am I your Lord? You ain't doing nothing that I'm saying. But yet I'm your Lord. You faking. You taking my name in vain. So he said, wherefore the Lord said, for as much as this people draw, draw near me with their mouth and with their lips do honor me, but have removed their heart far from me and their fear toward me is taught by the precept of men. So when your heart is far from God, you ain't focused on God. You ain't thinking about him. Matter of fact, King David said this over here. I just want to show you something. Psalms 119. Because somebody that's seeking God, they always want to know what thus said the Lord, how they can be a better servant, and so on and so forth. But I want to see something over here. It was, uh, yep, here you go, right here. Psalms 119 and verse 155. Salvation is far from the wicked. Wicked people. They ain't trying to have nothing to do with God. They blaspheming, they mocking. 
don't want to hear it. It says, for they seek not thy statutes. They don't want to hear God's word. The wicked ain't trying to hear that. So once again, we got to draw closer to the Lord, family. And not away from him. Let's go and take a look at something else. Let's see, go and see what Zechariah the prophet was saying. And this is going to testify to the fact that we have to obey God's word. If you want to be in fellowship with him, true fellowship. Let's take a look at this. Zechariah 1. Zechariah 1 and verse 1, it says, In the eighth month, and the second year of Darius, came the word of the Lord unto Zechariah, the son of Berechiah, the son of Idu, the prophet, saying, The Lord hath been sore displeased with your fathers. Now, why was the Lord sore displeased with our ancestors? Therefore say thou unto them, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, Turn ye unto me, saith the Lord of hosts, and I will turn unto you, saith the Lord of hosts. So obviously he was displeased because they was going away from his commandments. They was turning away from him. Somebody that's near to God don't have to be told, turn near to me, because you already turned to him. He says, be not as your fathers, unto whom the former prophets have cried, saying, thus saith the Lord of hosts. Turn ye now from your evil ways and from your evil doings. But they did not hear, nor hearken unto me, saith the Lord. So that's why the Lord was so displeased. Because the Lord was raising up prophets to go and warn the people about the, the calamity that was coming. Because of their wickedness. And they didn't want to hear. They shut their ears to God's word. And therefore, he was upset and he had to bring some drama down on them. So the Lord just want us to draw closer to him, family. If you knew to serve in the Lord, take things a day at a time and always rely and trust on God. You have to know that God will never fail you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. If you seek in him, he going to be found of you. Now, Satan, on the other hand, he can make it seem like he with you up until the point to where he you know, doing everything for you. But then when he pull away from you, you're going to be destroyed because you fell for his tactic without seeking God. You got to we, we need God. Denounce all of the works, the, all of the wicked works of Satan, the devil. Come over to the side where it got light at. It's better over here. So once again, let's go and take a look at it again. Let's see what Paul told to Timothy. Let's go over here and look at uh, 2 Timothy. 2 Timothy 2, and let's take a look at verse 11. Because everything that I read is saying, look, draw near to the Lord. Hang on, before I go there, it was something else I was looking at. Hang on, let's go and take a look at something else. Before we go to 2 Timothy, why the Spirit is putting it on my mind. Let's go back here now. I want to show you something. Because regardless, we got to we got to trust in the Lord, family, regardless of what's whatever's going on. So look at this. Habakkuk three. Verse 17, it says, although the fig tree shall not blossom, neither shall fruit be in the vines. The labor of the olive shall fail and the field shall yield no meat. So it could be a drought. Ain't nothing happening. We ain't eating. We ain't doing nothing. It's a drought, right? Once again, that ain't supposed to turn us away from God it says the flock shall be cut off from the fold and there shall be no herd in the stalls yet I will rejoice in the Lord I will joy in the God of my salvation so it it could be a famine but Habakkuk said I'm gonna still joy in the Lord regardless so it don't matter what's happening family let me see something else one other thing why the, why the Lord is putting it on my mind let me see was that a uh, Job 14 let me see here. Let me see. Give me one second. Uh, it's not Job 14. It's Job 15, 13 and 15. Job 13, verse 15. It says, though he slay me, yet will I trust in him, but I will maintain my own ways before him. So he said, though he kill me, I'm still going to trust in him. And that brings us to this other precept. Just give me one second. We're going to get back to 2 Timothy. But let's go over here to Romans. Romans 8. Because nothing should be able to separate us from God. We're supposed to draw near to him. Romans 8. 
Romans 8 and verse 35. Look at this question that Paul poses to the Romans. He says, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? So they going through all of this and they still ain't walked away from Christ. I mean, these people are vig vigilant, vigilant and diligent in keeping God's commandments. He says, as it is written, for thy sake, we are killed all the day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. So they, man. They giving up their life for God. The ultimate sacrifice. It says, nay, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I'm persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. So ain't nothing going to be able to separate us from the love of God nothing so guess what we need to be drawing closer to the lord family and not away from him let's continue let's go now to second timothy second timothy 2 second timothy 2 and let's take a look let's start at verses 3 through 4 it says thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of jesus christ so god chose us to be soldiers family and whatever come our way, we got to deal with it through prayer. And sometimes things require fasting. Prayer, fasting, and patience. Waiting for God. It says, no man that warreth entangleth himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who have chosen him to be a soldier. God chose us. So the people that God chose, they were in no way weak. They were, they were faithful to God, all right? So this is why Christians and servants of God, people that's truly serving God, those are some of the toughest people on the face of the planet. They are more than conquerors, all right? That's what we are. So now, let's continue. Verse 11, it says, It is a faithful saying, for if we be dead with him, we shall also live with him. So if you die with Christ or die in Christ, you're going to live again. If we suffer, we shall also reign with them. Suffering is a part of this walk, family. He says, if we deny him, he also will deny us. We got Paul saying the same thing to Timothy. If we deny him, he going to deny us. If we believe not, yet he abided faithful, he cannot deny himself. Oh, this go to show you. Even if you don't believe, he's still true. So, Hey, what you going to do with that? We got to draw near to God. As a matter of fact, he said when he when he died, he was going to draw all men to him through his cross. Let's go and read it. John 12. John 12. I love how the Lord, he just match up all of these precepts for us to get understanding because it all makes sense. Let's take a look at this. John 12. And let's have a look at verses 23. Let's look at verses 23 through 33. Let's read that. And Jesus answered them, saying, The hour is come that the Son of Man shall be glorified. So it's almost time for him to get crucified and give up his life. It says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Except the corn of wheat fall into the ground and die, it abideth alone. But if it die, it bringeth forth much fruit. So once you die, you producing much fruit. That's why the scriptures say the day of one's death is the is better than the day of one's birth. Because now you got your reward coming. He that loveth his life shall lose it. And he that hateth his life in this world shall keep it unto life eternal. So if you not holding on to this world and you giving up your lifestyle to serve the true and living God. You got eternal life coming is what Jesus is saying. And I think we ought to obey God rather than me. He says, if any man serve me, let him follow me. And where I am, there shall also my servant be. If any man serve me, him will my father honor. Oh, my goodness. Do you see what we got coming for serving God for drawing closer to him? 
He said, where he at, that's where you're going to be at. Where the Lord going to be at? Right there in the kingdom, dwelling in Jerusalem. He said it over there in Psalms 132. He have desired Zion for his rest. This is his rest forever. Okay. So once again, we will be in the kingdom. We serving him now. We can, we can be in the kingdom when he appear in his kingdom. Because the scriptures is telling us that. And not only that, the father is going to honor you for honoring his son and the father. You see what we got coming for drawing closer to the Lord? Let's see what else he said. 28. Father, glorify thy name. Then came. No, 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 no. Hang on. 27. I got to read 27. He says, now is my soul troubled. And what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour. But for this cause came on to this hour. So he said, Lord, like he was praying to let that cup pass. He said, Father, save me from this. But this is what I came to do. So his flesh was getting weak. But he was he, even Jesus was drawing closer to the father. He says, Father, glorify thy name. Then came there a voice from heaven saying, I have both glorified it and will glorify it again. He said, I already glorified it and I'm going to glorify it again. He said, the people, therefore, that stood by and heard it, said that it thundered. Oh, this is how you know God's voice sound like thunder. And sometimes, you know, just a side note, when it be thundering real loud like that, I be wondering, like, it, God must be speaking, but we don't understand what he's saying. Somebody heard what God said, though. This is how I know. It said, the people, therefore, that stood by and heard it, said that it thundered. Others said an angel spake to him. Oh, my goodness. So God's voice sound like thunder. He said it was deep as many waters, right? Let's continue. It says, Jesus answered and said, this voice came not because of me, but for your sakes. Now is the judgment of this world. Now shall the prince of this world be cast out. The prince of this world is Satan, the devil. How did he get his power? Well, he got his power when Adam obeyed him through his wife and he submitted his power because whoever you yield yourself servants to obey that's who your master is so he adam gave up the power but jesus christ thank god for him coming and taking this power away from satan the devil so once again jesus is going to cast out the prince of this world which is satan the devil it says and i if i be lift up lifted up from the earth will draw all men unto me. He talking about his crucifixion. He drawing all men unto him through his sacrifice on that cross and with his life, his entire life when he was walking around here on the earth for 33 and a half years in a flesh and blood body. It says this he says signifying what death he should die. So he's drawing all men unto him through his sacrifice on that cross family. All right. So let's start wrapping this up. Let's go over here now to Hebrews 10. Hebrews 10. And let's take a look at verses 19 through 23, I believe that is. But let's take a look when we get over here. Hebrews 10. Hebrews 10 and verses 19 through 23. It says, having therefore, brethren, boldness to enter into the holiest by the blood of Jesus. It, remember, he said he was going to draw all men unto him, right? It says, by a new and living way, which he have consecrated for us through the veil, that is to say, his flesh. And having an high priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith. Having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. That pure water is none other than the word of God. Have a, having in a conversion and a way that we think. That's the only way we going to be able to have fellowship with God. We got to have a change in mind first. And then everything else will follow, family. All right. So once again, it says, let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering. So we can't be wishy-washy, double-minded. One minute you serving the Lord, the next minute when something happened, you, uh, I don't know about that. No, uh-uh. We're going to stay loyal regardless. We got to take the good with the bad. All right? So once again, it says, for he is faithful that promise. God is faithful. 
He ain't gonna never lie to us. So we gotta stay patient, all right? So now let's uh, wrap this up with this verse. And then we'll continue on with the mission statement of the channel, which is to turn the hearts of the people back to God. So let's take a look at Psalm 73. Psalm 73. And let's read verses 27 through 28. And we're going to sum up this whole Bible study with these two verses. Let's see what Asaph, the priest, had to say. It says, For lo, they that are far from thee shall perish. So if you far away from God, you're going to perish. So if you don't want to perish, it's wise for you to draw near to God. It says, thou hast destroyed all them that go a whoring from thee. So everybody that walk away from God, you going a whoring from him. He said he, he going to destroy you. So we don't want to get destroyed, family. And in that fire, you're going to remember that you should have listened to him. Go back and read Proverbs 5. Go back and read. I'm going to just flash this on the screen so you all can read this because you're going to remember that you should have been listening to what thus said the Lord. You should have listened to the prophets and the apostles and especially the father speaking through Jesus Christ when he was telling us what to do. So go back and read Proverbs 5 and uh, verse 11, 11 through 13. You'll see why I'm telling you that. Go back and read it on your own. So, Psalm 73 again, verse 28. He said, but it is good for me to draw near to God. I have put my trust in the Lord God that I may declare all thy works. So that's what we're doing. We draw near to him because we trust him. And we're going to continue to confess the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and his father and his word and his righteousness and everything else. Because we ain't got no other choice. This is our lifestyle, family. Shouldn't nobody be able to come in and, and turn you away from the true and living God. Nobody should be able to do that. True faith is believing in God fully. True faith is having faith in the blood of his son, Jesus Christ. All right. To redeem us because this life is trash. So now let's go over here and look at the mission statement of the channel, which is to turn the hearts of the people back to the Lord. So let's go and take a look at this in first John two. First John two and verses one through two. So the good news is God is a very merciful God. And if we sinned against him, which means that we broke his law or did something that was contrary to him, we can confess that sin and turn back to him and let him know, Lord, I'm sorry. Keep me away from that. As a matter of fact, remove that desire from me to even want to sin against you and fill me with your Holy Spirit so that I don't transgress. And if I'm doing anything wrong, show me, Lord, so that I can be in perfect harmony with you. You said you ain't willing that none should perish. So, God, you got to give us the wisdom and the understanding on what we need to please you. So once again, first John two verses one through two it says, my little children, these things write out unto you that you sin not. And if any man sin, we have an advocate with the father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. And he is the propitiation for our sins and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. So God is the atonement for all of our sins. So with that being said, let's use this opportunity to call on the name of the Lord or the name of the Father in Jesus name. So Heavenly Father, we thank you for your mercy and your grace. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for sending your Holy Spirit and leading us and guiding us and teaching us all truth and get and being our comforter as well lord so heavenly father we pray on behalf of the body of christ the less fortunate the fatherless the widows the wrongfully imprisoned the ones that's sick and afflicted among us the ones who are entrapped by satan the devil heavenly father we ask that you send your word may you help us bless us and keep us may you bless our finances lord may you bless our health may you bless our mental state lord to just have peace in you in the almighty name of Jesus, we pray that the words of our mouth and a meditation of our heart, O Lord, is acceptable in thy sight, our strength and our redeemer. So, Lord God, we even asking for you to pray for us as well, Lord Jesus, as our high priest after the order of Melchizedek. So with that being said, may the spirit of God rest upon each and every one of us. I love you all so much. 
I pray that you all enjoy this Sabbath that's coming in this evening. And uh, bless Sabbath to the family that's uh, uh, keeping the Sabbath already. I know Australia is uh, 15 hours ahead of us. So peace and blessings to you all over there. Peace and blessings to the family that's over in England, London, England, and everybody else. And let's keep uh, England in our prayers, man. They got a lot of stuff going on over there that's like out of control. Uh, Sister Amanda was letting us know that uh, they, they got a whole lot of things going around that's, that, that's just out of control. And they definitely need God over there, like we all do, all around the world. So uh, with that being said, family, once again, I love you all so much. Let's keep the faith. Let's bring this Sabbath day in right. And Lord willing, we'll be back tomorrow with another topic on the Lord's Sabbath day. Preaching what thus saith the Lord in the almighty name of Jesus. Until then, peace, family, in Jesus' name.